Walmart is certainly a company that we talk about a lot nowadays. And there's a lot of things that are going on at Walmart. We all know how Walmart really wants to corner the whole industry of its brick and mortar. But what is really taking place behind the scenes that could be putting the brick and mortar? Walmart currently operates nearly roughly about 5,000 stores in the U.S. And there's a Walmart within 10 miles of 90% of the population of you and me. That's pretty good for a company this size, right? The retail giant has a massive brick and mortar footprint in the whole realm of retail. But the company's dependence on those stores as its chief moneymaker might be changing really soon. And the reason being is, and that's according to comments made Tuesday at a conference in Orlando, Florida. Today, the vast majority of our overall profits are an attribute to the in-store brick and mortar in the United States. According to a transcript that was released from this meeting in Orlando, Florida, if you fast forward five years, they are much less dependent on that as income stream than of some of the other fast growing parts of the Walmart business. Now we all know that you can go online, you can order all types of things from all different types of retailers, Walmart, Amazon, Target. I mean, you know, everybody's going to that direction. Where is Walmart really stand on this particular issue? And what do they have planned for the future? As I am talking that it has been designed already and being tried out in New York and is coming to a local city near you. We'll get to that in a minute. Instead of Walmart, we'll increasingly look to the fees it charges these third-party sellers on Walmart.com. You have noticed you've gone in there and looked at something and it's got some ridiculous price on it. That's a third-party seller. Along with increasing its lucrative retail medium arm as chief revenue streams, expanding their e-commerce channels is also the main program to the Walmart strategy going forward from this point because they see the writing on the wall. And here's why. Delivery from a store has almost tripled in volume over the last two years. And in the month of January of this year, just in one month, it generated a gross profit of $1 billion. Now, what does that do? That tells you that most customers are basically loving the whole idea of ordering, having it delivered to their home. And what is taking place is it's changing who is shopping at the Walmart Corporation. These conveniences are something that appeals to every income demographic nowadays. And so they are really leaning into this area with a lot of investments that they are making. They are dumping millions and billions of dollars into this whole delivery from the store. And this is where the company is going. And the reason being is, is because they want to make sure that, hey, they're turning a profit. That's all that matters. 2026, if you go to a Walmart store, if they still exist, there will be certain types of Walmart stores I'm going to discuss here in a second. But if you go to these stores, it's going to be not like what you do today. You know, Walmart has to keep growing and Walmart is growing. I mean, whether you like it or you don't like it, you don't agree with Walmart or anything else, doesn't really matter because the basis part of society is going to Walmart. Total different demographics of people are now shopping at Walmart. Walmart last month reported that its U.S. same store sales rose 8.3% or 13.9% on a two-year stack basis. Now, could that be higher prices? Could that be inflation? We have no choice but to pay it. It is what it is, but they're making money. That's why it doesn't matter if you like shopping at Walmart or not. 
they're there. Now let's get over here and let's talk about the stores of the future. By the end of the fiscal year 2026, Walmart believes and is targeting roughly 65% of stores will be serviced by automation and a reduction in stores will be done due to the automation, due to the delivery service, and the lack of having to have these huge brick and mortar stores. Approximately 55% of all fulfillment center volume will be moved through automated facilities and unit cost averages could improve by approximately 20%. So they're saying by them doing this, you could be saving 20% on your grocery bills or whatever you buy at Walmart. However, there are some scary parts of this too. Now they do go on and they state that it doesn't matter if you are uh, working for Walmart, um, you know, you're still gonna have a job. They're saying this is gonna create more jobs than losing more jobs. Sounds a little fishy to me. You think about how many people are out there, how many people are working right now, and what is really taking place, and how they want to reduce the amount of brick and mortar stores, and use AI and automated services and everything else in 65% of their stores, why do they need people there? They're developing all this as we are speaking. Something to think about, folks. Because the store of the future, and we're only talking three years away. It's not like this is something that's going to uh, uh, happen in 50 years. This is three years. And there's a lot of people that could be out of work. Yes, we all shop at Walmart in a sense because it's cheaper. You can have it delivered. You can go online and have different types of things delivered right to your home comes either ups fedex or by walmart depending on where you live moral of the story there's a lot of big changes coming to this company they're going to keep turning the revenues and they're also going to make sure that whatever they do it's going to benefit the company not the employees so i'm survival preparedness for beginners thank you for joining me on this video today you all stay safe, keep prepping, and enjoy your little time while you do have at these Walmarts. Because when automation comes in, there's cameras everywhere. You will be being watched, even though they say you're not. Who do you trust? AI is coming. I'm out.